Well, hello, my name is John Graves, and I'd like to address the notion of conceptual change and the next generation science standards. I'm assuming that you come to this podcast knowing some terms around next generation science standards. You know that there are eight science and engineering practices. There are seven cross-cutting concepts, and there are four major disciplinary core ideas. There are numerous resources available to help you if you aren't aware of just some of the basic information around the next generation science standards. What strikes me, though, as an area that is worthy of discussion is the very first chapter of the framework, which was the book that formed the foundation for understanding and the development of the next generation science standards. And that first chapter was called A New Conceptual Framework. As I've worked with teachers over the last several years, I've come to understand the importance of helping all of us understand conceptually what the next generation science standards are about. When we begin to think about this idea of conceptual change, at its core, it is, by definition, learning that changes an existing conception. It's a process that results in a paradigm shift of how we're thinking about something, and that revolutionizes our prior thinking in that regard. Numerous researchers and authors over the years have done work in conceptual change, and they all tend to agree that it's this principle of changing one's thinking about something that is this process of conceptual change. It is not a one-time event. It is a process. And so as we as teachers go through this process, we need to struggle with the internal um, angst that we have so that as we help our students engage in the next generation science standards, we have an understanding of the conceptual challenges that they also will have. In the framework itself, it talks about conceptual change in children and learners. And in one instance, on page 68, it talks about helping students to ask questions, and they need to demonstrate their understanding of phenomenon. And that engagement um, results then in an essential component of the process of conceptual change. And without that engagement in the process of encountering phenomenon, of beginning to ask questions about the phenomenon, and understanding what's going on, conceptual change will not take place. Another um, statement is on page 230 of the framework. It says, exploration is critical to aid students' development and support the deep conceptual change that is needed for them to truly understand science. Page 313 mentions conceptual change, and it talks about that idea of conceptual change taking place from naive perceptions to a deeper, richer understanding of whatever science phenomenon students are engaging with. One of the things that I have come to believe is that conceptual change takes place along a continuum. This is one example of a conceptual change model, and it's designed in such a way to be illustrated as a cycle as opposed to a linear model. As we encounter conceptual change ourselves as adults, I think we see ourselves moving back and forth in a cycle process as opposed to a linear process. One of the first step is to build awareness around what I believe about the three dimensions. From there, I can begin to expose my beliefs about those three dimensions. I'm questioning the validity of teaching in a 3D manner. I am struggling through what it truly means to engage in those science and engineering practices. Another step in this cycle is confronting my own beliefs. So I question my pedagogy in light of the three dimensions. Another thing that I will do is then reinterpret my beliefs. That's that principle of moving from those naive perceptions to a deeper conceptual understanding of 
the concepts that I'm working on. So in my mind and in my practice, I'm beginning to reorganize those three-dimensional beliefs. From there, I move into integration. I take the principles of three-dimensional practice and put them into place in my classroom. But it's quite possible that I will move back in that cycle someplace. I may need to go back and reconfront my beliefs about something, even though I've begun to integrate it into my classroom. I run up against a wall. I run up against a, a problem that I didn't know was going to present itself. So I need to redial and, and rethink through that conceptual change cycle in order to see where I currently fall in terms of my belief. Eventually I get to the point where I become a three-dimensional teacher. I'm inventing myself. I am we're involved in ongoing three-dimensional professional development and I'm planting those three-dimensional teaching seeds for others out there. One of the ways that we can find out where we currently are in our conceptual understanding of the next generation science standards is by taking a self-assessment. This self-assessment will really help you identify where you are in terms of the understanding of the science and engineering practices and you will quickly find that you may need to spend more time on some of the practices and less time on others. So I highly encourage you to take this self-assessment. As you view the other podcasts I've created, I encourage you to return to this conceptual change cycle to periodically check and see where you are as you're moving through the conceptual change necessary to become a three-dimensional teacher of science. Thank you.